Now before the break, what I what I said what I wanted to look up is about resetting the camera. So sometimes you've got your your camera, uh, you you really changed it up. Like over here, I did a rotation and whoops, how do I put it back? Well, there is a way to reset every property of the camera back to how you originally had it. Be careful here because it reverts it back to how you originally had it, not to your last movement. If you want to fix the last movement, that's a regular undo. But if you want to reset it back to before you started to make changes to it, you'll see that if you select the, um, let me see, I think the panel should automatically be open, right there. If you, if you switch back to the camera tool on the right side, you will see camera properties. There's properties of the whole movie, and then there's properties of the camera plus other effects. But here it is. So when I was moving things up and down, that's position. When I was moving things, zooming in and out, there's zoom. And when I was rotating. So if I want to put those back without any zoom, I can just hit that button and it rotates it back. I had it 1% rotated on accident. Right, that takes it back to zero. If I wanted it back to reset it to 100, again, it doesn't reset it. It resets it to back, back before you made any changes, not the last time, which may or may not be what you want. So I'm going to undo that, actually. That's where you see that. If you want to reset things back before you go further, I rotated it and I didn't mean to rotate it, you can change that property back to regular. The last thing I want to do here is one more scene, because after this action that's going on, about now there's a, a new challenger approaches. Well, I want the, um, the scene to change to be a brand new text that says, you know, to be continued. So we'll create a new scene. I'll call this TBC, to be continued. And I won't get too fancy here, I'll just draw, uh, write some text to be continued. I'm not going to bother like animating or anything. I'm not going to bother to animate it or anything like that. You could, of course, but this is just practice. Like, what if I make each word appear? Again, you could if you want to for practice. And I want this to be continued to be visible for three seconds. So I can then add time, F5, all the way to, sec to three seconds, which seems to be frame 72 or so. Right here, F5. No, nothing is changing. So I, I use an F5 to add time. If I wanted to change, if I wanted to rotate or fade out or do other things, I would F6, but I would first turn it into a symbol to do stuff with it. I don't need it to do anything special, so I'll just F5 there. Control Enter to test it, to look at the masterpiece so far. Got that happening. And animation wise, maybe it's coming together pretty well, but what always puts the extra polish on a movie is music. So we'll talk about adding a little sound, sound effects or music or both to your project. So I think that ending needs a little bit more time maybe. I've, I've only got it for three seconds. Maybe I'll add two more seconds. I mean, it's practice, so yeah. It's practicing. It's just practicing, yeah. And it's playing it and replaying it and maybe getting other people's opinion. Again, you've been looking at it over and over. You know how it goes in your mind. The word to be continued is readable. But one thing when there's text, a technique is read the text out loud three times. If you can say it comfortably out loud three times, it might be long enough for someone to actually read it in their head. The mouse in the house, the mouse in the house, the mouse in the house. Plenty of time for that. When I get over to the to be continued, again, I'll read those three, I'll read it three times at a normal pace. I'm not racing against myself. I'm gonna read it at a normal pace. To be continued, to be continued, to be con okay, needs a little bit more time. So I also need to spell it right. To be continued. And I need some amount of time. This is when you 
experiment to give it some time. S five seconds is probably safe. It might be a little more than I need, but now I've got more time at the end. Okay, the topic of sound. We probably have some great music in mind that we want to use for our project. Like I would love the Star Wars music to be playing at the beginning here, that'd be perfect. And then I want, you know, some great sound from insert current hot band here in scene two. And then I want some other famous sound on part on scene three. The point is no, don't use famous music. Don't use music. I, but I bought it on iTunes, I paid for it. You only paid technically for you to listen to it. You didn't pay for you to use it in a project. But everyone else does it. Yes, everyone is also doing it wrong. Copyrights um, are a thing that will get you in trouble, get you sued, make you lose money, etc. Especially if you are using other people's work. So especially, for example, music. So it's a there's the concepts of fair use and educational purposes and all of that, which is complicated. So the easy answer, instead of using a famous song, you can, in YouTube, get access to thousands of songs that are free for you to use, that are safe for you to use, and no, not by searching it over here. You have to have an account. You can log into YouTube, and there's a screen in there where it lets you download the actual sound. So I'm going to sign into my YouTube over here. You can if you want to, but I'll give you a sound in the network folder in a moment. But let me just sign into my account here. Uh, we don't need to record that. And I'll show you as soon as I log in here that the YouTube has a location where you can get all of these free tracks. They're not going to be famous tracks from famous artists and all of that, but I need a sound that is spooky. So I can go in here and it'll give you all the list of scary sounds. I need sounds, I need music that is like happy and fast because there's a chase happening. You can get music like that. I need a sound effect of a zombie. There is that sound effect. So it's all over here. When you've got a YouTube account, you, you need to go over to your creator studio. Uh, and again, this is recording if you ever wanna, if you wanna go back to it after the lecture. But over on the creator studio, we have a section over here under create. And here's all this music. Let's listen to one. Okay, so as you can see, that is in the style of cinematic, dramatic. What about dance and electric calm? And play that one. <laughs> Let's see if we can find a less scary one. That'll work perfect for my mouse animation. And I have simply a download button. Well, what's great about this, again, I want to use a famous music from my favorite artist. I don't uh, recommend you do that. Even though for a school project, no one's going to see this, just the instructor. If you ever do upload this for real somewhere, and you have this copyrighted song, you could get uh, into some trouble because you didn't pay for that usage of the song. When you buy a song, you're really only paying for the usage of listening to it, not to copy it or to use it for other purposes. YouTube gives us thousands of songs, often that they don't have words. That's one of the things I often want for my animation. I don't want the lyrics to be conflicting with my, with my visuals. So you get a, all of these different styles of music. You can go over here and say, give me a mu music in the style of mood of inspirational. Let's see some inspirational music. Sure. What about cosmic love? You can go also then to uh, instruments. Show me only uh, trumpet or trumpet focused music.
you can have it search also uh, for duration and genre and so forth. See, that's perfect for my animation. So to use this, uh, I'm going to download one of these and I'll give it to you in the network folder if you have your own um, if you have your own YouTube account you can you can search for your own songs I would recommend when you do your movie definitely do this you probably all have a YouTube account go up to that button on the top right corner and go to the creator studio and then over here under create audio library you have all of this music oh, I forgot to say also we have sound effects over here so music plus sound effects you can go to sound effect. Let's see, this is the sound of an afternoon storm. Aggressive zombie snarl. Airplane rocket. So these are all these sound effects to work with in addition to the music. But after you find the track that you like, then you just click the button to download. It'll download. It's downloaded, and um, I need to put it into my flash drive, and then I'll put it into the network folder, and then I'll show you how to put it into your project. Did you guys cover putting music into your projects in part one? Okay, so if you did, that's good. Uh, where's my thing here? Yes, so we're going to see why in a moment because of our settings. Uh, where did I save my project? This one. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. Into the network folder, I'm also going to put the song I just downloaded. If you want to see this, like I'm going to show you, say as 250, oops, say as 126, I'm putting a song in there. Lucky Rubber Ducky. So if you want to test this out with your own and on your own computer, now I have headphones to check out for you if you ever need them, actually good ones, or the other ones if you don't want them, uh, you can check those out during class. But the uh, the music file, we then need to import it into our project. So. After I move it into the folder where my project is at, back in Adobe Animate, we'll go to File, Import to Library. I'm going to take a file that is outside of this project and import it into this project into the library. And there's a couple of things to, to set here. Synchronization plus quality. The default is unsynchronized low quality. So that's why maybe if you were using sound last semester, it didn't sound that great. So I'll show you the synchronizing it plus higher quality. First, I'll import it. And you need to go find your file wherever you saved it. You can import just about any kind of sound or video file. But the classic ones, MP3, should work just fine. So now I've got a new item in my library panel over here. So I can do a play and a pause. Now, Animate does not have a very good sound editing tool. If I want to cut out only 10 seconds or if I want to cut out a piece in the middle, this is not that great. We have instead uh, on our computers Audacity, which is a more powerful sound editor, but it's its own thing. You can, of course, get help during class time. How do I use Audacity? But you may not need to get very complex with your music. Maybe I just want it to play in the background. That's it. So I've imported it into my project. I want this song to start to play uh, on scene one. Uh, the title scene, that is. 
you should create a layer for your music or sound effects. So I'm creating a new layer. I'll call it music. I personally like to have the music layer as the very last layer at the bottom so that I can always find it. So on frame one of your music layer, if you click on frame one of your music layer, you can then go to the properties. There's no sound in this frame. After you've imported a sound to the library, you can go to select a sound. We have there, lucky rubber duck. Well, that's the most basic way to put it in. However, it's often not the best way because of these other settings. Sync, synchronization, right now it's set to event. This is usually the worst one. You usually want to set this to stream. That will mean that wherever you see a sound wave, you can then synchronize it with what's happening in your animation. So if, you, if, if that drum beat happens right there, which is the moment that I want the cat to appear, set to stream, they will line up. If you set it to anything else, they probably won't. The sound is going to play on its own, at its own speed, and your animation is going to play separately, so you usually want it on stream. That way what you see also lines up with the, uh, the audio. When I play it this way, When I play it this way, two things happen. I hear that it still sounds low quality, which I'll show you how to fix, but then now it's no longer playing on the next scene. That's normal, because the music was only playing on these first few sec six seconds. People think, well, okay, I'll put it back on event, because when it is on event, it does play throughout your whole movie, but then it doesn't synchronize. So if I need my music to play at that moment something different, I'm not going to be able to synchronize it because I don't see it. If I go to scene two, mouse, there is no music for me to look at to synchronize. So you do have to do the extra work of, I have a track of music on this scene and I've got it set to stream. Then I'll need in my other scene, you know, you can copy a whole layer. You can copy that music layer from scene one titled into mouse, paste it in, and then it'll synchronize. Now you'll have something to look at to actually synchronize. Copy layer, scene two, paste layer. So now, on the actual mouse scene, the music is there on its own layer with a stream synchronization. I don't have the music layer in the ending scene, so it doesn't continue, but you get the idea that wherever I have, wherever I want my music, I need it on its own layer in that scene, set to stream. And do you hear that hi-hat? You don't hear it when... You don't hear that because it's compressed. So the final thing to fix here is you're going to hear your sound quality amazing when you play it 
in anime but when you actually finally export it or you test it out right here it puts it into low quality well this is when you need to go up to the file uh, publish settings so adding sound is pretty easy import to library that's it but these details synchronize it via stream it needs to be on its own layer and then these publish settings we need to tell it what's the quality of our music which is right over here audio stream audio event we're using stream it's set to mp3 16k mono one of the lowest qualities clicking on that lets you set it to higher quality you know a, a, a song that you buy off of iTunes or that you stream is often at 160 or higher and they set it to 16 that's like 10% quality than you're used to that's why it sounds terrible if you don't want it in um, mono you have to go to the higher levels you may or may not need stereo sound does your sound play differently in the different ears or not uh, but that's the big reason why maybe on part one of the class your sound sounded terrible because you never went perhaps over here to this to this settings screen file publish settings and now I'm seeing my audio here so either if you use stream or event they're both set to very low quality you want them higher quality you could go all the way to 160 um, even like at even like at 48 I think it's still better quality than and the lowest one that it had. Yeah, I put that on 48. And I can hear the hi hat. What happens is when it's at the higher quality, your final file is even bigger and bigger. So you see, my, my project right now is 111 kilobytes. If I put it the higher quality, it might get 200 or 300, so it just takes up more space. It takes up more space on your flash drive. It takes longer to upload. Oh, it kind of slow, has some slowdowns at times? It might have slowdown also if, if the computer can't handle playing it at the higher qualities. So that's, that's one of the reasons it's very low quality, but I think it's way too low. I would be safe. I would sort of recommend to put this over here to the uh, 48 K. It's like a, a pretty good level here uh, of, of quality, definitely. So you, and, you like change it to instead of fast quality, you change it to like best. That's the same thing that also happens. Exactly here. It's on. It's on like the lowest compression, but a higher bit rate. So that's a good mixture. Mm -hmm. If you then go to best compression plus highest quality, then your file gets even more high quality, even bigger, even maybe more slow down. So I would leave quality as fast, but the bit rate at 48 is a good, good starting point. Okay. So once again, that is under File, Publish Settings. All right, the... the um, what I want to do for the moment is, okay, there's one more thing about like compressing it for as an actual movie. We'll do that next time. I want to give you some lab time at the moment. We've covered a lot of little things. Uh, these concepts of how to add music to your project. We saw that. How to add the camera so we can move around. Actually, let me mute that. We saw a, a little bit about scenes. Uh, focus on the action in a different scene. We played with the camera movement, a little bit of music the dimensions of your project if you didn't set them properly at the beginning you still can you can still return to the properties of your project and if they weren't set to HD quality you can still set them but I want to give you some lab time to work on today's assignment when we come back next time we'll do a little bit more lecture on more animation topics I will give you the bullet points of what you need to do for the movie project the movie project will be due on the first we need a couple more lectures, a little more lab time. Um, they informed me that at the library and the student center, room 420, they do have Adobe Animate for you to work there. However, they don't seem to have tablets, unfortunately. And I, I can't really check them out. They can only be in this room. Um, so mind your time. Make, you, make sure you use it as much as you can. And um, if you need any help, call me over, and we'll have some lab time until 4. 
be with you one moment. <laughs> 